So it turns out, ha ha, I'm going to have a big Yu-Gi-Oh problem on my hands that I just realized about as I'm looking at my deck list, and it's going to make me look like a big donkey in the Yu-Gi-Oh community when I spend hundreds, if not probably more like a thousand dollars on a Rage of the Abyss case. Let's dive into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most Avery LR32 and destroy the ever living Yu Gi Oh! problem boo boo stain off that like and subscribe button so we climb even higher and higher. The 1500 ladder, the channel's been blowing up lately, and yes. I saw someone comment, they must be new to the channel, but I'm sure you hit that like and subscribe button while you were checking out this channel. Yes, my intro is inspired by White Boy 7th Street. I think a lot of people that are new to the channel don't realize that, but anyway, yeah, that's where I got the intro from. I used to watch White Boy all the time. Anyway, hope you're all having a fantastic day. I've got a big Yu-Gi-Oh problem, and I was sitting here thinking about this. I've been thinking about it over the last couple of days, um, but now that Konami's updated the uh, regional list back on September 30th, um, I realized, who oh, am I passing one minute? Yeah, I, so I can say this. Oh crap, I'm screwed. So, for those of you who don't know, if you're newer to the channel, I live in Florida, um, specifically Jacksonville, Florida. So, for me to travel to a regional, especially when you're living in Florida, any sort of uh, state when you're by the water, and especially when you don't live in the middle of the United States, I can't speak for Europe, Latin America, because I've never lived there, Sugar Boo Bear, so I don't know what it's like. But whenever you live like on the water or on the coast, it's very difficult to travel to events because you're talking spending an average of, I would say, five hours, three hours if you're lucky, on the road traveling to a regional. It's very rare that we get a YCS in like Orlando, which is in my backyard, even though that's like three to three and a half hours away because everybody and their mama got to go to Disney and get some big old ears to put on their fat head. <laughs> but besides the point... Um, they updated the regional locations, and for me, I will typically go to either a Florida, preferably, or if I really got to travel, I'll go to Georgia for a regional. You know how many regionals I have for the Rage of the Abyss regional season? <laughs> Two of the things! You know what the dates are? October 12th in Bainbridge, Georgia. Population, probably 25 people. I've been there before, and it's a ghost town. You want to go move to, like, the sticks? Move to Bainbridge, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Guess what the date is? October 12th. Guess when Rage of the Abyss comes out? The 11th. So you have less than 24 hours to get cards unless you go to your locals and hope to God that they have the set a day early on the 8th. More likely, they're going to have it the 9th. So you got to go out. You got to spend... With how locals have to pay for overhead and stuff, you're probably gonna spend like nine hundred to a thousand dollars on a case for a very expensive set to get you three copies of Fualos, to get your um, Crimson Sorrow Lacrima Fiend Smith card, to get your Azamina cards if you're gonna be playing Snake Eye like your boy. So it's it's very close timing, right? And I can't even make it to that one because I'm working my part time job on the 11th. So that's out the door. Then there's one on the 20th at Cool Stuff Games Hollywood. That is almost six hours away. I am not going all the way there. I don't need an invite that bad. Even if I wanted to go, it's on the 20th. It's only eight days after the last regional. So if I couldn't get cards by the 12th, now I've got basically, let's say, five to six days because you may want to go to locals to play test in person, get some paper play under your belt. I always recommend that to anybody play testing for a big event. Let's say four, five to six days to get all the cards you need for your deck and then to look at deck list out of the regionals from the previous week or two or so to then go to this event on October 20th, which I've been to a regional at Cool Stuff Games Hollywood. It's their locals. Like there's maybe 150 to 200 people tops in there. So if you go X2, you're probably not going to get your invite. So you have to play perfectly and that just sucks. The bigger the regional, the more mistakes that you are allowed to make in theory to where you can still get your invite. You know, if there's only 200 people at a regional, it's not going to be a top 48 invite top cut. So it makes it much more difficult to top and get your invite, if that makes sense. Outside of those two regionals, I have nothing. It's like I'm living in fucking Europe where they had no events for God knows how long. And then they were spending $1,000 on Snake Eyes at the time to play at Locals. 
I'm looking at my current list right now, which is by no means complete. It's honestly kind of garbage, but just for snake eye stuff and not an, and extra deck stuff, not including the Azamina stuff. I need three, six, nine, 10, 11 cards. I need three black, Witch, three wanted one temple, one snake eyes, the bell star, one more bonfire. Cause I pulled two out of my three cases of tins. Yes. I lost my ass. And then I need one ambler whale, possibly depending if players end up playing that and then of course i need promethean princess black witch and promethean princess get reprinted in bonanza the qcr bonanza set guess when that is pimp november so it's like unless i'm gonna pay the premium price to get black witches and uh, promethean princess what am i doing like i'm paying the premium price to go play at locals like <laughs> So I'm just like, Jesus Christ, what am I doing with these cards? Now, for context, you're probably thinking, well, Avery, you got to spend a lot more than that because you got to get Fiendsmith cards. No, I pulled a whole fucking Fiendsmith core out of my info case. Go watch that on the channel. We did a live stream, shameless plug. I always live stream whenever I'm doing case openings. Uh, I pulled three engraver, uh, the two tracked, and then I had already bought the Lurie, the Wave Hiking Caesar. Uh, we pulled a sequence, Necroquip, uh, Disarray. Uh, yeah, like we've got all the other stuff I'm looking at here in the extra deck sequence, uh, closed heaven, requiem, all that good jazz, right? So like the Fiendsmith stuff's not the issue, assuming that Fiendsmith cards are still played. Um, but then that's not including what if players end up playing like a 60 card Snake Eyes as I mean a Fire King list, which I've been seeing running around a little bit where there's combo lines that you can do with the Fire King stuff because we're getting Ulkanix. I'd have to buy into the Fire, Fire King stuff out of the structure deck because I only have a few cards lying around for that. So I'm like... Am I going to spend all this time and effort just to go play at locals and get my butt cream pied by a freaking runic stun player in the room? Like, no, absolutely not. So I'm sitting here like, should I just take a break again for like the next few months? Because remember, I took a break near the end of last format. I'm really itching to play Snake Eyes as Amina. I want to play this deck. The deck's actually really fun. It's not as tier zero broken as everybody was making it out to be because you get raffle stomp by Droll and Lockbird. Like I genuinely want to see Droll and Lockbird banned along with Dimension Shifter. That's how insane Droll and Lockbird is into the Snake Eye as Amina matchup. Fun fact. But I'm like, Instead of me going to locals, like, I may as well sell off my Fiendsmith core, sell off all this Snake Eye stuff that I pulled out of the tins, and just move on with my life. Like, and it's really a damn shame, because now, the only event that I have to look forward to is the YCS in Orlando, which isn't until February of 2025. So I could prepare months in advance even though it's pretty much all but guarantee we're gonna get a new fucking ban list before that event rolls around so it's like i'm playing in a make-believe format with stuff that will maybe happen and it's really like kind of asinine because yes the format is bad but once we get rage of the abyss we get a lot of diversity with how many decks will at least be playable. Not necessarily good, but playable. Like the water deck I think is going to be pretty solid. The samurai deck seems decent enough like for locals or like an OTS championship. Like I don't think you're going to be able to go to regional and get your invite with it. And then obviously like if you're going to a YCS, the diversity in a sense is good, but if you've got too many decks in the room to prepare for, that's when the competitive player base, uh, and I'm saying like the upper echelon player base, like the packs, the Joshua Schmitz, like people who could blow me out that I can keep up with. But if they win the die roll, they're just going to blow me out. Those players get all pissy and upset and start crapping on the floor because it's too much diversity. And you only have so many cards in your side deck that you can generically use to prepare for every matchup, if that makes sense. So uh, in one sense, the format's going to be healthier, but then it's also going to be more toxic because you don't really want that diversity, I guess, in a bigger event setting but then you're also dealing with foilos or foilos whatever however you pronounce it so you're dealing with six mulch armies and it's just like snake eye as amina activate simple small deception uh ghost ogre by the way i've also got foilos so go ahead and try and make a fucking silvera as an omni negate while i'm drawing cards sugar boo bear you gonna finish that pizza and it's like <sighs> this format's ass so i'm <sighs> I don't know. At the end of the day, I don't know how I really want to approach this, which is why I'm making this video. Like, what do you think I should do? Do you think I should just sell off like my Fiendsmith cards that have done nothing but gain value at this point that are all near mint because I haven't used them in any competitive deck? Um, should I sell off the Snake Eyes stuff I pulled? Should I just be taking a break from this game and playing Edison format, which I'm really tempted to dip my toes into and goat format and all that? At the same time, I'm like, 
I'm looking at this deck list on my other monitor and I'm like, I want to play this deck. Like I've wanted to play Snake Eyes for a while. The problem is also with that, and I'll wrap the video up here, is that I've also talked about this in deck profiles where like I'm more of a mid-range player. I do better at Yu-Gi-Oh! events in general when I'm playing more of an off-the-beaten-path deck that is more mid-range combo. Like, look back at my 10th place Tempai finish and my 10th place Centurion finish. Both of those decks, people really weren't prepared for, especially the Centurion one. People knew that they could get King Calamity locked, but they didn't know what else the deck could do. So they crapped all over the floor when, like, I'm playing 15 hand traps with three talents, and they're just getting Raffle Stomp because Shifter and Droll doesn't do anything to the deck, and people just didn't know. So, whereas if I'm playing something more meta like this, I'm probably going to get creamed easier because people know how to stop it. So, guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Uh, like I said, I'm looking at this list, and I, I want to play Snake Eyes so bad. Like, the deck is really fun with all the Azamina combos and stuff. Like, I'm really tired of playing dog shit decks like White Force and just getting stomped, trying to go off the beaten path to try and pants people. It, it doesn't always work out well, or as well as you may hope. Guys... Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video.